day and welcome to the Blind Advocate channel. If you like what you've seen, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and hit that like button as well. Um, I've been part of the MS support group uh, here where I live in Armidale since the late 90s. Um, the last couple of years have been really busy. Uh, I went to a meeting recently and I met uh, Cindy. Um, and I was talking about using CBD oil and then um, Cindy started talking and I just just sat there and listened. She really got my attention. Um, so I asked her to do this interview and she agreed. So welcome, Cindy. Thank you very much, Jeff. Um, so do you want to just um, let everyone... A brief description, uh, like how old you are and uh, you know, married, kids, that sort of thing. Yep. No worries. I'm 53 years old. I got diagnosed uh 2013. Yep. I got originally got diagnosed with relaxing remitting, and I'm now, but they that was not true. That's it's primary progressive. So yeah, um, I'm married. I have two children, one 27 and one 25. Um, I'm from Armidale originally, so <laughs> oh, okay. my mum and dad owned my mum and dad owned the bike shop up there, Bullen's bike shop. Oh yeah. So yeah, so I'm I'm from up there. I left Armidale in um 89 and moved down here. And my husband was my brother's best friend. So yeah, that's sort of how we ended up together um i go to armadale because being from there i get a great support group up there and tamworth doesn't have one at all we've got uh, there's a few ladies that get together but we don't have a support group so i went home to armadale and that's where i met you and yeah that's basically my story so far so, um yeah okay. i don't know what else i can tell you um, how old were you when you first started noticing the symptoms and, and what kind of symptoms did you have? Radio. I was a hairdresser, Jeff, and I used to work long hours and I ended up with a sore index finger and a thumb and I thought, oh, okay. But then I used to get a hot spot in my back. So that was uh, in the... June of 2013 and my daughter was away living at the time and she'd said I've got show jumping horses well I had and um she sent a horse home for me just to play with because he'd been injured and I jumped on him one day and I pulled the girth up and I fell off and I thought mm, I've been riding all my life what's go here so I got back on him and I got him down to the sand arena to work him and I could walk him and I could trot, uh, canter him, but I couldn't trot. I couldn't get a rhythm at all. And I thought, oh, this is a bit strange. So I went to the doctor and the doctor said to me, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. You need a holiday. And I went, mm, okay. Mm -hmm. So then I was home a week later and I went to walk up. I've got three steps coming up to the house. I went to walk up and I fell flat on the face. I thought, yeah, this is great. This is really good. Anyway, I went back to him and he said, look, I've already told you there's nothing wrong with you. And I went, yep, yeah. I went off. I won't tell you what I said. And I walked out. With that, he sent me a letter sending me to the neurologist here in Tamworth. And he said, oh, it's all in her head. There's nothing wrong with her, da, da, da. And I said to Greg, there's something wrong with me. I feel, I, it, everything feels different. And anyway, I got an appointment with her in December the 17th of 2013 and she, when I walked in she said oh you've got carpal tunnel and I went no nah, that doesn't make you walk funny like my uh, my walking had become where I was paddling and walking really heavy and my husband had been saying to me bloody hell you walk heavy and I'm like I don't know so we got into Lisa on the 20 the 17th and then she said I'll send you for an MRI on the 27th of December which I did I then couldn't see her till the 11th of January of 2014 because, of course, they go on holidays, don't they? And when I got there, I walked in and we sat down and she went, oh, bad luck, you've got MS. 
well, I did not hear a thing after that. I sort of blocked everything. I thought, oh, shit, I'm going to die. That's all I could think of. Like it was just a slap in the face. Yeah. And then she said, right, I want you to start on Jelenia. And I went, right. So I had to go to hospital and have, um, I spent the day in hospital starting Jelenia. Did that. And then she said, I won't see you for 12 months. And I went, oh, okay. So 12 months later, I went into her and she said to me, oh, you're doing really well. Everything's fine, da, 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 da. And I went, oh, okay. That was in the January. And, of course, Tamworth gets very hot. And I come home and I said to Greg, I felt like I was going to combust. I was really hot. So I decided to go down and get in the pool. But when I got down there, I was sitting there and I thought, right, I've had enough. I'll go up and I couldn't walk. Couldn't walk at all. So I rang her up and I said, Lisa, I need to see you. I was only there two days ago. And she went, sorry, 26 weeks before she could see me. Uh And I went, right. So I coped and I got back to her in the June and she said to me, oh, you're worse. And I said, well, do you think I ring you for the sake of ringing you? Something's going on. And she went, oh, I want you to go off. Jelenia, I want you to go on to Tysabri. And I went, right. And I said, I'm not needling myself. There's no way. I can't do it. I hate needles. And she said, no, 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 you'll have to go for an infusion. You'll be fine, da, 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 da. So I did that and I was on it 10 months. And I said to my husband, I don't like her. It's, they're not proactive with me, what's going on. Like, nobody can tell me what's happening with my life. Things are happening and nobody's telling me. So I went to Canberra and saw um, a doctor down there because he did stem cell overseas. Colin, I think, Colin Andrews, I think his name was. Mm. And I went down and seen him in Canberra. And when I got there, he said to me, Cindy, why has she got you on Tysabri? And I went, I'm not a neurologist. I don't know. And he said, well... He said, you've got five MRIs here. And he said, nothing has changed since you were diagnosed. And I went, yeah, and? And he said, well, that means to me that you are in your progressive stage. You are not relaxing or remitting. You don't have relapses. And he said, and you don't go sort of back to normal. You're just getting progressively worse. And I said, yes. And I said, right. And I said, well, I wanted to go overseas and have stem cell. And he said, well, he said, it's about 160 to 180,000. He said, but he said, I would not recommend it for you. He said, because being progressive, he said, you've got a 10 to 15% chance of it working. And he said, it's a lot of money to spend if it doesn't work. And so, of course, I cried all the way home and thinking, shit, my life is going to end. I'm 40. 45 year old and I'm going to bloody you know and he went go and he said look did Lisa ring you and I said no and he said well what about your JC virus and I said yeah I had it 10 months ago what about it and he said well did she not ring you and tell you you were positive and I went no and he said the JC virus yes what's that it's a um, it's called a John John Cunningham virus or something something that goes with MS that you can either test positive for we all apparently have it but whether it comes out in everybody but with MS and Ty Sabri especially it's fatal. Right. So okay. I've been having Ty Sabri for ten months, but I was positive, which means I could have died at any time. Wow. I had a girl. I had a girlfriend die seven weeks prior to my trip to Canberra and she had MS and she was positive, but she also had a brain tumour. But the MS, the Ty Sabri was keeping her um, her brain tumour at bay. But she had the infusion with me on the Tuesday and she passed away on the Saturday. Mm. Wow. 
So it, I, I, it made me even more crankier. So then, of course, when I got back to Tamworth, like we were there on the Thursday, I sent him. So on the Friday, Friday, sad day, we stayed in Sydney and then we come home. And then the Monday I was due to have an MRI. So, of course, the neuro in Canberra said, can you send it through to me? And I said, yep. Well, when I got there, I sort of went in, had my MRI. And I said to the guy at Castle Ray, that doesn't seem like the same MRI I normally have. And he typed away and he went, well, you've never had this one before. And I said, well, what's it for? And he said, well, it's got nothing to do with MS. And I went, so I rang Lisa and I said, look, Lisa, um, I'm down here having an MRI. Now it's got nothing to do with me having MS and it's going to cost me $932 and what's the go? And she went, oh, oh I've been really busy and I've, I must have written the wrong thing on the form and da, 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 da. And I went, well, not good enough. And she said, oh, well, you're going to have to go back tomorrow because I was due to see her on Wednesday. Going to have to go back tomorrow and have a new one and I'll write them a letter and you won't have to pay for it. And I said to him, yeah, radio. So, of course, it's not Castle Ray's fault that she stuffed up. So I had to pay my first lot. Then when I got back the next day, she forgot to write the letter. So I had to pay another $932. And I was livid because, like, I can't work anymore because I can't stand up for long enough. Mm. And, and like, luckily my husband, it like, has a good business and we can afford to pay for it. So I rang her up and I went up. Oh, and then I went up there on the Wednesday and I walked in and like she would have known that I'd been in and seen Colin because he sent everything back to her. And then when we walked in, she went, oh, my appointment was at quarter to three. We got there at 20 to three. She called me in at quarter to three and she said, I've got five minutes. I have to go. James and I are going away. And I went, excuse me? Jesus. I said, this and like, of course, I lost. I'm not, I'm very, very forward. I will tell you how I see it. I don't care if someone doesn't like it. I will say what I want to say and mean what I want to say. And I said to her, look, Lisa, I said, you are not proactive with me. I said, what about my JC? And she went, oh, did I forget to ring you? And I went, well, look, Lisa, I said, lucky I didn't die. I said, I would have left my children and my husband and my family all because of your income like you're not bloody being proactive with me and she went oh and you've been down to see Colin I went don't shit me Lisa I said as far as I'm concerned I said I'm not paying you for this visit you can get stuffed I said you've cost me three grand in two days and I said I've had enough and she went oh well where are you gonna go and Greg turned around and he said well she's already got an appointment in Newcastle so and she went oh I used to work with Janet and I said I turned around and I said I don't give a shit who you work with this is my life. Like I need to know what could happen to my body or what I'm going to go through. Like I need to know. And of course I basically walked out of there and never went back. And so I went to Lisa, her name is, she's married to James down here. They're the only neurologists in Tamworth. Right. Other than the fly-ins. But he james has been here forever lisa was his 2ic to me with ms like i know it's a bloody terrible disease and it's shit and like you see some people that go through with relaxing remitting and they can cope really well primary progressive it shattered me because i didn't know what was going to happen so like, do, you, do you want to just explain the, the difference between relaxing and primary pro- progressive for other people? Radio, relaxing, with relaxing remitting, you tend to have like a relapse, which like they call it a exacerbation. You have that and you sort of, you have a downfall, but then you sort of climb nearly up to normal. So you can go back to normal. Like you might have three or four days where you're, not walking real well or you might lose your eyesight or different things happen but you go can go back to normal basically right there's three types so relaxing remitting is your first one which is the most common primary progressive is 
you're on a downhill run all the time. You don't have relapses. You don't have it. You don't know. So mm. that's me. And that's the least common one there is. There's only very few people with it. Then you've got secondary progressive, which is you have relapses and you get worse. You don't ever climb back to normal. And that generally happens in older people. Like I've got a girlfriend here, Marianne got diagnosed in, she was 44 and she's now 72. But she she literally has secondary progressive. So she's got worse over time and she has relapses, whereas I don't. Mm. She was a high profile nurse here in Tamworth, very, very well educated um she used to go to james but in the end she went there and james said to her look you're nearly 70 go off all meds and just see how you go and of course she got really really sick so i rang jan uh, of my friend in newcastle who is um janet's secretary and we got marianne an appointment down there well she put her straight on offer of us and marianne's going really well really mm -hmm. really well so I do you want to just talk about um, some of the symptoms you have, like when you said you couldn't walk um, and yep. you, yeah, you're walking really heavy. Um, I, I understand that, but other people may not. So just do you want to so give a bit more description what, on that? what sort of happened, I noticed when I was riding the horses that my knees just felt like they were lead. I couldn't actually rise in a trot. I They kept locking up. and then. When I walked, instead of actually walking normally, I would slap my feet down, slap them really hard. Yeah. And that was that was a real thing for me. I mean, like I really noticed that. But they kept saying, oh, no, no. And, of course, with my MRIs, Jeff, I have only a small cluster behind my left ear, but it's all in my spine. Right. So that's why my walking, my balance, like my eyes, my hands, my hands are different. They're not numb. They're just different, different sensation. Like, and I, I feel all my feet, but my legs are like concrete. Yeah. They, cause the signal doesn't get through from your spine through to your walking. Like it does to a certain extent, but I have a drop foot. I do trip a lot. I thought my balance is terrible. At the moment, I'm sort of at a stable stage where the opravus is obviously working for me. It's slowing progression down for me. It's not actually, nothing will ever stop me and I can never be cured. But it's slowing it down. Instead of me, like, well, James Hughes told me that I'd be in a wheelchair 12 months after I got diagnosed. So, yeah. and I, I, I am, I'm very pig-headed. I, I, I don't want to be in a wheelchair. I don't want to lose my independence. So I fight every day. Like I, some days are worse than others. Um, I used to basically get out of bed of a morning, sit in a corner and cry all bloody day. But that's one of the things I wanted to just to touch on quickly um you know with all your symptoms and, and your diagnosis how did that affect you uh emotionally and mentally um you know, how well did you cope and you know what problems? I didn't cope I didn't cope Jeff I literally as I said for the first 12 months I literally get out of bed and I'd sit there and I would cry all day every day and I thought this is bullshit this is a life like it had me scared to the stage that I thought shit I'm gonna be in a wheelchair I'm gonna be weighing and pooing myself I won't know where I am what what's gonna happen what about my children I don't want that for my kids I don't want that for my husband and I got I did I got very very depressed and I didn't sleep I did not sleep my leg cramping was so bad that I'd literally be up 50, 60 times a night laying on tiles trying to stop the cramps and poor old Greg never got any sleep and I, I was terrible. 
And and, and that's when you started um, taking the the uh, THC oil. Yeah, I I take I don't take THC. I take CBD, which is okay. the cannabinoid. Yep. Only because I still drive, and I would never put anybody else like THC can make you high depending on the le the level and how high it is. Yeah. Um. Lucy Haslam was down here at that stage and she's the lady who started the cannabis oil thing. Her son, Dan, he played soccer with my son and Dan had bowel cancer. So Lucy was a nurse. Her husband was a detective and it was a no-no. So when yeah, Lucy sorry. said to me, Lucy said to me, look, you know, try it. I went, no, nah, that's just, that's naughty. I won't do it. I've never smoked drugs. Um, I, I'm not doing it. No, no, no. So then Greg got on to my, my mum and dad and said to mum and dad, look, you talk to Cindy and see if you can persuade her to, to at least try it. We can only try it. And so mum and dad come down and they said to me, oh, you know, you've got to try it. And I went, nah, that's naughty, dad. Like they have drugs. That's naughty. That's naughty. But when Lucy took me through it and explained it, I said, all right, I'll try it. So I tried it and within 10 days, I was sleeping from 10 till seven every day. No oh, cramps, yeah. no nothing. And I said to Greg, isn't it funny? I can look back now and say, if I didn't take it back then, I probably would have ended my life by now. I wouldn't have done it. It yeah. was too hard. It was too hard, and so and what, what do you think that the public? Because you know, I understand. Um, I have uh, what I call many attacks when my balance is really bad. I'm like a pinball machine. I'm just pinging off walls, yep. and so do I. Um, yep. And, and people, uh, there was a woman uh, who put a, a story in a newspaper here in Armadale, um, and she said that you know when she was having the tax and she'd be walking and, and she'd be really sluggish. Everybody was looking at her and one woman made a comment and said, oh, yeah, fancy being drunk. A lot of people don't, they don't know, like they don't, they look at you as if you're pissed all the time and I don't drink. I don't mm. do anything bad. I'm not a bad person and like I fell at Coles and nobody would help me up. And I lay there sobbing my heart out. And this man come out and he was in a truck. And I said to him, look, excuse me, I'm, I'm not pissed. I'm not nothing. I said, I was going in to get a bread roll and that's my car there. And could you help me up? And he went, I said, look, I have MS and da, 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 da. So he helped me up and he said, look, do you want me to ring an ambulance? And I went, no, 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 no. Just put me in my car and I'm coming home. So I come home and I rang Greg. And Greg said, oh, look, you're better in your doctor. So, because like everything creeps and cracks anyway. So I don't know. I've been to Pilates because I do Pilates twice a week. I go to physio. I do everything I can to keep me moving. And I'd actually got out at Coles and all I had to do was just walk in and get the bread for Greg and I was coming home. And I don't know what happened. This, my left leg is the one that drags. So it had tripped me. So I'd fallen, but I'd fallen backwards. So I pushed myself, my handbag away and fell backwards. But there was nowhere for me to claw onto to try and get up. Yeah. Like I need, I need to use my arms to get me up. And I like everybody, oh, she's drunk. She's drunk. And it was because I was in aerobic gear. People just thought that I was a homeless vagrant and, you know. And, of course, it did. It got me really, really upset. And, I mean, that's not the first time it's happened. I've had numerous. Look, I understand. I, 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 you know, I often get frustrated and I say, you know, look, I bloody hate being blind. I hate the way I am. Uh, yeah. And, and I was accused of not accepting, you know, my blindness or all the other things. I said, no, I, I accept it. I can't deny it. It's there. I just yeah, that's right. It. You just hate it. Yeah, you do. Yeah, and 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 it is. It's a. It's something that you go through in your mindset. I mean, if anything, I think the CBD oil has helped me because it clears my head a little bit. I'm not in pain, 
so I don't have that extra thing to think, oh, shit, I'm in pain, like nothing is going right, why? Because yeah. I'm not in pain with it, it's sort of, it's made me think a little bit more clearer and because I do sleep now at night, whereas before I was never sleeping. Yeah. I was I was just I like and like my mum my mum doesn't sleep very well anyway. So she insomnia she's passed on to all of us. And I think it's just that if you don't get sleep, you don't cope very well anyway. Yeah. And I think that with MS like you have to sort of listen to your body, which I wasn't in the beginning. I was like, nah, I'm going to do everything. And I would run myself ragged. I would yeah. get myself so buggered. And, and of course, then I turn into a bloody green-eyed monster, don't I? I, I was a bitch. <laughs> I was shocking. Like, and, and because my family are good, my but at times you want to strike out at them and say, well, you don't accept, like, you don't know what it's like. Yeah. You don't live my life. But, yeah, I, and, like, I know they do, but I also don't like to show when I'm buggered. I, do, I try and push myself to the limit. So yeah. how, you know, when you're first diagnosed up to this point, um, all over those years, how, how did that affect your, uh, your your immediate family and your marriage and all that sort of stuff? I have a lot to do with mum and dad and, and my sisters when I see them, but I sort of, I don't put the pressure on anybody. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, Greg, um, it broke his heart when he saw like the shit that it put me through. Yeah. And he's really good. He is really good. At times, my son is really, really good. My daughter, Courtney and I have a love-hate relationship at the best of times. She's really, really good with me. And then other days she'll say, well, just do it. And I'll be like, yeah, well, okay. You don't know what it's like, but mm. I tend not to argue with them. I mean, they're, they've become better. I mean... I suppose when when I first got diagnosed, I thought that my life was ending. I thought it was finished. I thought basically, holy shit, I'm going to die. And I know now that, and like, I suppose when I was growing up, we did the readathons, we did everything for MS, but you never think of MS. And like, I work with a lady who had MS, but I didn't think anything more of it. But then, like I left her when I got diagnosed and I thought, I thought, oh, that she gave that to me. That was my first immediate thing was shit. She was horrible. She put, she, she's done that. But then I know you can't catch it. It's just everything that goes through your mind. I suppose it's a, a bit like a cancer diagnosis in the stage that when at first they say to you, oh, it's unknown. We don't know what's going to happen here you go I was like holy shit I've got two children I've got a husband am I gonna die and it took it did take me a couple of years to get around that that like yeah I know you don't have to die from it it's the complications from MS that you will die from yeah like I've got my doctor his his sister in law, she she died uh, two years ago, but she got to eighty seven, and like she had it since she was she was nineteen when she got diagnosed. So mm. and they never had any drugs back then, like no. So yeah, I don't know. It's it's it was something that some days I have good days, some days I have bad days where I do want to cry and I think. But, uh, I mean, I suppose the slightest thing will bring you unstuck, but then half an hour later, I'm all right. I'm okay. I can do it. Like, do you know what I mean? It's I a, just it's, a, it's an ongoing grieving process, really, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. your life is never the same. It takes so much away from you. Yeah. It does. And, like, it's something that nobody can explain to you what it's like. Like, People, got, people just don't understand what MS 
is like and what it can do to you. And we are all different. We are all so different. Yeah. Like I've got a girlfriend here and like I've been friends. I actually was having Ty Sabri and the nurse come up and she said, Cindy, we've got this new girl. Can you meet her? And I went, okay. And then she come over and she said, oh, this is a name, da, 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 da. And she went, oh, by the way, she used to be a cop. And I went, oh, you assholes. I'm on cannabis oil. Like, um, like what will happen? And she went, no, no, she'll be fine. And, like, my girlfriend, she'd been diagnosed since she was 21 and she's now 50. Yeah. But she has relapsing remitting. But, like, her brain is as big as a goldfish. She forgets something. As soon as you tell her, she forgets it. Continue on. So the, the, the um, CBD oil, do you think that should be on the PBS list? For... Yeah, I've got I've got a girlfriend who went the legal way. Um, she, she gets 25 mil and it costs her nearly $500. Well, where Whereas from? it comes from Perth. She gets it through her doctor who then gives her a script and it has to go to a Perth thing and then she gets it back. Um, she, as she said, she did it this, I don't think she's going to continue doing it that way. I get mine on the black market, which I know people say is naughty, but no one here will prescribe it. Like Lucy used to do it and she was fighting for the health tick. Um <coughs> I go through Church of Ubuntu in Newcastle. I rang. I spoke to a doctor. He went through everything with me and he gave me what I recommend. He recommends. I just go onto their website. It gives me a, a thing. I've got a phone number as well. I just order it. I get 150 mil. So I get 100 mil of daytime and 50 mil of nighttime. And it lasts me uh, four, four and a half months, five months. And it costs me about $365. Whereas Mary Ann's 25 mil wouldn't even last me a week. Yeah, because I'm sort of, I think I've got um, a 100 mil bottle and um, that cost me about 300 and something dollars. <laughs> yep. But I went through the pharmacist. I got the script from the doctor and went through the pharmacist. Yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah. It's just really hard to, like, as I said, when Lucy started, we didn't have any of that. It was all, it was a no-no. And everybody said, oh, look, just go and get a joint and smoke it. No way. No, mm. no, no, no. And I didn't want, I didn't want it that it was going to impede on my driving or anything because, that's my, that's like, I like to do behind my own thing. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I didn't want, and I didn't want THC in it because like my sister-in-law, she passed three years ago and she had a pancreatic cancer. And of course they put her on it, but hers was full of CBD. So poor Anne, every time she took it, she was bounced. She was as high as a kite. And, like, I can understand why she was going to die. But I don't want that for me. I want to still be able to, I've been drug tested. I've, and CBD, see, it's the THC is what makes the difference mm. in the CBD oil. Yeah. So depending on your level of THC, I mean, there's a couple of people around Tamworth that now do it but they can't guarantee what their level of THC is. And to me, that's just too risky. Like I would never yeah. put anybody else, like to be able to drive, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do that to somebody, me driving and then run, running into somebody or something. I, I um, being blind, I don't produce that hormone that helps you go to sleep, stay asleep. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. my record to 94 hours without sleep. Well, see, I, I, um, when I had my infusion, because you have steroids and everything, I had it on the Wednesday. It was Saturday before I slept. I was yeah. just buzzing. I was, and I hate, I hate that feeling. 
And like I said to Greg, I just want to go to sleep. But every time I looked at the clock, it was only five minutes like further along. And I'm thinking, bloody hell, when's this going to end? But when I did sleep, I slept. Yeah. But see, if I if I sat on the lounge now and I put my blanket over my legs to stop anything happening, or my legs like to have a blanket on, if I do that, I'd go to sleep within five minutes. I'd be asleep. Yeah, you, you've got to listen to your body. And people have asked me, well, yeah. how did you do it? But if you become aware of the changes and what triggers things, then you can modify and reduce That's right. the symptoms. See, whereas and... I, I, I'm sort of stuck because I'm progressive, so I don't have relapses and I don't. But I know that if I push myself too hard, I do. I get tired and I get grumpy and I get everything else. Yeah. Whereas the cannabis oil for me has helped me maintain sort of what I want to do. I mean, I, I am scared at times to go out and walk. I, I hate using my walker. I hate it because people go, oh, you're too young to have one of them. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? I have, I had an old lady that got me the other day at the supermarket. I got out of the car. I walked in. I got a trolley. And I was getting some fruit and she walked, she would have been in her eighties and she walked over and like, I had my stick in the trolley. She pushed my trolley away. And of course, what was I doing? Hanging on to it. So ass over it, I went and I was laying on the floor and she looked at me and I went like, hang on sunshine. I said, you demand respect from me as your age. I said, do you think I carry this bloody walking stick for the sake of it? I, I was so cranky because then I had to crawl across the floor to get somewhere to hook on to because who else was going to help me up? Mm. And I thought, you just have no idea. Like, be kind. I mean, to me, yeah, everybody, nobody knows what people are dealing with. And, no, and they people, don't, people aren't aware of what your limits are either. No, they aren't. They aren't at all. Not at all. And that's, I find it really hard. Like I I parked the car here in Tamworth and it was the car before this one. I had an Audi and I parked it and Josh had gone to the bank and I come back and I said to him, look, go over to the supermarket, get me some milk. I'll drop you at the airport. He was going away. Anyway, next minute there's this bang on my window and I opened it and there was a guy there. Well, he went off his tree at me he was screaming at me and I'm like I just sat there didn't know what to do but then he got me so worked up that I was in tears and I'm like he's saying oh you drive a flash car like this you can't have anything wrong with you and I he was going he was hitting my car and I didn't know what to do well a man from across the road come over and he told him to piss off mm. anyway wouldn't have been five minutes later he'd come back and had another go at me but josh went up to the police station and said you know this is what has happened the cops are only half a block away from me didn't come down but he was a nice addict and i went yeah well that's great because like i couldn't i couldn't get out i couldn't say nothing i couldn't do nothing yeah i was just sitting there going what am i supposed to do like what am i gonna do and i said to greg and Greg said, why didn't you ring me? And I went, oh, yeah, and then I'd have you in jail because you'd come down and give him a whopping. <laughs> I said, it'd be on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that, I, that's what I find, like, I drive a nice car. Yes, I do. But it's comfortable for me and yeah. I can afford to do it. That's that's my life. And yeah. I said to Greg, people just don't, they don't see past that. And, like, People go, oh, you've got a disability sticker. There's nothing wrong with you. See how I walk. You try it. It's not yeah. easy. <laughs> Life is tough. But, so we're going to wrap this up. But um, yeah. what, what advice would you give to someone who's just been diagnosed with MS? I would always tell somebody to go and get a second opinion. Make sure that when you find somebody, because you go to a neurologist, you go to somebody who is proactive with it, even if it's a specialist. Like I didn't know near as much about my MS until I started with Janet and she is a specialist in MS alone. But always 
like always go and get that second opinion and then from there try and get into a good headspace in the spe- sense of yeah i know it's crap but try and make it each day to do, like whether you you go to physical like i go to one-on-one physical therapy for exercise i she makes me walk walk, she makes me do she makes me do squats i do lots of things i do exercise all the time try and keep you've just got to think that it's not the end of your life and i was at the impression in the beginning it is not the end of your life it just makes things a little bit more difficult but hey think about it and do it i mean and as of the CBD oil, don't be scared of it. It's a herb. I hate it. I, I, I nearly vomit every time I take it. I hate the smell of it. I, I have to hold my nose, take it, and then skull something really thick to take the taste away because I vomit it up. Yeah. But it, it has made a huge difference to my life. Yeah. So just... Yeah, look, and I agree with what you just said. And what I would also say is reach out to support. Yeah, yeah, reach, reach out. out. Yeah, reach Even if you out. Just well, that's why and... I went to Armada. Yeah. Is because, like, admittedly, I went to school with 99% of the people and I know all the people at the group. But reach out and make it so... You've got somebody there, even if it's just to like to ring up and say, shit, I'm having a bad day. Yeah. We all understand that. And I think like we've actually just had two girls diagnosed down here and they're only 19. Mm. Um, one of my girlfriends who's moved away from town, she actually reached out to me and asked me to contact this girl because she's into horses, which I have done. But she's obviously she's not ready. I can only do what I can do. And I've reached out. I've got her to try and come and have our social lunches and that. But I think at the moment she's only new, newly diagnosed. So she's basically gone, nah. But yeah. she's progressive. So um, it's only going to get worse for her. I'm in contact with the mother all the time. And like I said, I'm here. All she has to do is pick up the phone and ring me. I can come around and see her or whatever. I can be here for you, but I can't tell you what to do. Yeah, she probably still like on the final stage. Yeah. Well, well, not like at 19, I suppose you don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. True. I didn't want to hear it and I was bloody 44. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. You well, sort of, yeah. Yeah, all right. We're just going to wrap it up. Um, yeah. Thank you for that. And no um, worries. Yeah. Um, I'll see you at the next meeting. It's in October. I'll be up there then. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. The, 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 okay, the then. Face to face. But thank you for that yeah. today. I do appreciate it. No worries. More um, than welcome anytime. Okay. Well, thanks for watching that video. Just want everyone to know that I will be putting content up every week. I'm also looking for people to interview uh, and if there's any topics you want me to cover uh, just let me know in the comment section and please make sure you hit that subscribe, like and share buttons. Thank you.